In a sign of the times, the Honda CRV now only comes with a self-charging hybrid engine. That change of focus was announced for the 2021 model year, along with a light update inside and out for this fifth generation model. Otherwise though, the essential character of this RW1 series design hasn't changed, nor has its primary rival, the Toyota RAV4. The CRV though still has a very individual appeal, and Honda hopes that as a result, you'll find this a hard car not to like. Honda's CRV has long been one of the world's strongest selling SUVs. And sometimes in a market full of more extrovert rivals, we've wondered why. After all, this has never really been a contender that's jumped out at you from the spec sheet. No, you have to drive it, use it, fill it with family. Many of those experienced in doing just that probably won't even look at the alternatives before replacing their second, third or fourth generation CRVs with this Mark V model, a car that's been changed quite a lot since it first arrived in our market in 2018. The biggest change came for the 2021 model year when a light update inside and out for this RW1 series design was accompanied by a move to focus the entire lineup on Honda's full hybrids self-charging power plant. Creating the car we're going to look at here. Like its predecessors, this crossover, according to its maker, offers a depth of engineering that many other rivals just don't have. It always has, ever since the original version of this compact recreational vehicle pretty much invented its segment back in 1995, with subsequent models in 2002, 2007 and 2012 being pushed ever more upmarket. This Mark V CRV took a bit of time to get to British shores. The car launched in the US as far back as 2016. It took two further years before we saw it here. A delay perhaps related to the fact that versions of this RW1 design for our market are assembled in Japan rather than being screwed together in Honda's UK Swindon factory like their predecessors. Still, by and large, the wait for this fifth generation CRV was worthwhile. Honda had thought long and hard about the kind of crossover this Mark V model CRV should be, and as a result, some pretty fundamental decisions were taken in creating it. A seven seat cabin layout option was introduced, so was a new one and a half litre VTEC petrol unit. Most significant of all was the introduction of the electrified two litre self charging petrol engine that would start the brand's across-the-board switch to EHEV full hybrid powertrains across its entire model range. For the 2021 CRV model range, the decision was taken in Japan that the focus would switch entirely to that hybrid engine, which meant the end not only for the conventional 1.5 litre VTEC petrol power plant, but also for manual gearboxes and third row seating options. That change, along with minor suspension and handling tweaks and a light exterior and interior upgrade, created the car we're going to look at here. To understand it completely, you're going to need the industry's most comprehensive road test, the car and driving review. Most CRV folk aren't quite ready for a full EV in a car of this class, but they'll feel like they've got themselves one when they start off in this hybrid variant, the only one now available in the range. It's really very EV-like, away from rest, quiet, quite quick and seamless in its initial acceleration. The engine cuts in quite quickly, but even when it does, it's pretty unobtrusive. The reasons for all this lie in the innovative engineering on offer here, an EHEV powertrain with two electric motors, one for propulsion and another for generating electricity that gets stored in a lithium ion battery under the boot floor. The main drive motor develops 184 PS mated to a two liter I VTEC petrol engine that adds a further 145 PS. 
The combination propels the car via a single-speed auto gearbox with a proper fixed gear system rather than the rubber band CVT transmission you get in comparable Toyota and Lexus hybrids. And the whole confection delivers an almost diesel-like level of pulling power, 315 newton meters, enough to get the front-driven model to 62 miles an hour in 8.6 seconds, though the top speed is to suit the current zeitgeist, limited to just 112 miles an hour. Depending on road conditions and the way you want to drive, the powertrain switches between three modes, hybrid, EV and engine. Only in the least efficient engine drive mode, accessed via this dashboard sport button, is the petrol motor connected directly to the wheels. For far more of the time though, you'll be using electric assistance to a lesser or greater extent. In hybrid drive, which is what you'll be in most of the time with this Honda, the engine's there to supply power to the smaller generator motor, which in turn provides it to the propulsion motor. Finally, there's also a dedicated EV setting in which this Honda will be fully electric, though only when the battery is fully charged, and even then only for just over a mile. Aside from drive modes, you can also use paddles provided behind the steering wheel to maximise engine braking energy regeneration, so charging up the battery faster and increasing the amount of time the system can switch away from petrol power. A typical CRV customer, though, is unlikely to be fiddling with drive modes or worrying about brake energy regeneration. They'll want smooth, relatively silent and supple progress across suburbia, on the commute and throughout the school run, which this Honda delivers in a pleasing but never memorable fashion. As an alternative to the standard front-wheel drive model, for quite a lot extra, you can have the eHEV powertrain matched with the brand's proactive real-time all-wheel drive with intelligent control system. That's four-wheel drive to you and me, which is what we have here. This setup's based upon a multi-plate clutch with electro-hydraulic actuation and has been tuned to send more torque through the system and can push up to 60% of it to the rear wheels when required. The extra weight of this setup takes an insignificant three-tenths of a second off the rest to 62 mile an hour sprint time, but it'll give you an extra touch of peace of mind on icy mornings. There's not much point in telling you what this car will feel like if you start throwing it about because that's something few owners will ever be minded to do. Still, should you find yourself running late on a twisting secondary road with something burning in the oven back home, you might discover that this fifth generation model's stiffer, compact global platform helps it to roll a little less than its predecessors through the turns and that the Agile Handling Assist torque vectoring system borrowed from the Civic improves cornering traction. There are a couple of useful features engineered into the auto gearbox. Early downshift during braking, or EDDB, increases engine speed to assist you during braking and to allow you for quicker re-acceleration once you reapply the throttle. Similar is the fast off feature, which maintains engine revs in a situation where you've applied the accelerator, then rapidly released it. As you might say, if you prepared to pass a vehicle, but then found yourself temporarily unable to complete the maneuver because of a vehicle in the next lane. In such a situation, fast off maintains engine speed so that when you can recommence the overtake, you're immediately in the right rev range to be able to do it. Should we talk about off-piste ability? Well, it might seem pretty pointless given that the all-wheel drive system on offer here is intended for snowy snaps in suburbia and muddy car parks rather than trips into the wilderness. Honda, though, wants us to notice that lighter forest tracks are just about within the CRV's remit thanks to the 35mm increase in ground clearance built into this fifth generation design. This all-wheel drive hybrid model actually sits 200 millimetres off the deck, which is 10 millimetres higher than the front-driven version and a much higher stance than is common in this class, one that Honda claims has been achieved without altering 
this car's centre of gravity. As is usual in this segment, the real-time all-wheel drive system we mentioned earlier is one of those that sends drive to the front wheels nearly all the time, pushing torque rearwards only when a loss of traction is detected. In that situation, there's no need to mess about with extra gear levers or buttons. Everything's done for you. Of far more relevance, though, is, of course, the way this car drives on ordinary, everyday tarmac. As we suggested earlier, if you stay in its commuting comfort zone, it's hard to imagine a mid-sized family crossover of this kind that would be easier to live with. We're very impressed by the way the multi-link rear suspension smooths out potholes, speed humps and road undulations. And offhand, we can't think of a quieter car in this class. Honda's put a tremendous amount of effort into minimising noise intrusion with strategically placed body sealants, a flush-mounted windscreen and optimised aerodynamics. Plus, there's active noise cancellation, which uses two in-cabin microphones to search out engine noise, then cancels it out by creating precisely timed reverse-phase audio signals through the stereo speakers. It's all most effective, and the result is a machine beautifully fit for purpose. When it comes to automotive design, the more people you have to please, the less distinctive the end result is likely to be. This apparently is the world's favourite SUV, so a lot of people are going to have an opinion on how this fifth generation version looks. Most should be satisfied. There's plenty of chrome to please the transatlantic crowd, while wide arches and large wheels pushed closer to the car's extremities help in delivering the required level of curbside presence. Overall, though, there's nothing too controversial here. Perhaps that's as it should be. This car's visual appeal has always been low-key, and you sense that's exactly the way loyal customers like it. It's pretty hard to spot the changes made to the 2021 model year version of this fifth generation design because there aren't many. The best bet if you're looking to identify this as a facelifted version of this Mark V model is to look at the Honda badge on the grille, which for this updated model gains a blue ring around the H to designate the switch to a hybrid only engine range. Otherwise, things have been left much as they were back when we first tested this RW1 series design back in 2018. That grille features a heavily chromed solid wing graphic and the solidly sculpted front bumper has clean surfacing and frames a slim lower grille in the front valance, either side of which are silvered fog lamp bezels, incorporating further LED illumination on plusher variants. Further up, sharp contours on the bonnet lead the eye up to a sleek, flush-mounted windscreen. It's all quite premium, which fits the required brief. And from the side, well, if you knew anything at all about Honda CRVs, you'd probably recognise this as the current car in the line. The V-shaped kink in the rear quarter light is one of this model line's signature touches, and the chrome-framed glass house will also be familiar to CRV regulars. But there's plenty of attitude too, thanks primarily to these heavily contoured rear haunches, the high taut shoulder line, and, as mentioned earlier, large wheels, which have been restyled as part of the facelift and are 18 inches in size. Another update relates to the way that rear privacy glass is now standard across the range, provided you avoid entry-level trim. A few minor facelift changes feature at the rear, slight styling revisions for this lower valance and more blue tinging around the central Honda badge. Otherwise, this Mark V design has been left as it was. So LED lights continue to curve below the back window, connected by this chromed solid wing bar that runs the width of the tailgate between the lenses. But lower down, that valance is underlined by the kind of silver grey faux skid plate style panel that SUV sector buyers expect. This one's separating the tailpipes and carefully contoured for optimum airflow. Just like this roof spoiler. It may be subtle, but it contributes significantly to this CRV showing as one of the most aerodynamically efficient models in its segment.
Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. This Mark V model sits on an adaptation of Honda's compact global platform, originally developed for the 10th generation Civic. This chassis is not only lighter than the one in the previous pre-2018 era fourth generation model, but is also 25% torsionally stiffer, thanks to the incorporation of ultra-high tensile steel, which here makes up 36% of the body frame. The switch to this more sophisticated platform also facilitated a 35% improvement in the body's global bending rigidity. When it's time to take a seat behind the wheel, you'll note the way that this car offers its driver's seat at a very convenient hip point as you climb in. And inside, well, what appeared quite contemporary back in 2018 seems a little dated now, as you'd expect, given that this fifth generation design made its original debut in the US as long ago as 2016. Since then, we've come to expect larger screens for dash and infotainment displays than this RW1 series model was originally created to offer. But if you can live with that, there's still plenty to like here. The switch to a single hybrid engine for the entire lineup means that the old conventional manual and automatic gear levers are no more. Instead, you get this selection of big gear shift buttons, P, R, N and D, which, like the old gear stick, fall nicely to hand on this jutting out lower console. As usual with Hondas, the ergonomic placement of wheel, pedals and seat is almost faultless. And though you wouldn't mistake this for a premium brand cabin, Everything seems to be very well screwed together. Ah, yes, the premium issue. Uh, attempts have certainly been made here to give this Mark V model a more upmarket feel, hence the smarter silver finish applied on this facelifted model to key visual elements on the centre console, door, cards and dashboard accents, which works quite well with the various soft-touch plastics used around the upper dash areas and the stitch leather on the door trims. It might pay the company in future, though, to employ the services of an interior stylist poached from one of the posher manufacturers. Someone who might point out that for a real premium feel here, the fake plastic stitching needs to be dispensed with and metallic surfaces that really look like metal rather than painted plastic need to be introduced. Many of the fixtures and fittings are borrowed from the brand's 10th generation Civic, including the rather unusual instrument binnacle you view through the three-spoke wheel. It's one of those combination digital and analogue affairs with stylized analogue battery charge and fuel gauges flanking a central TFT LCD screen. This offers an arching charge and power meter above a digital speed display which sits as part of what Honda calls content zone. This can show settings for audio, phone and speed limits plus a trip computer data and a tension monitor and an energy flow monitor. Just click this thumb pad on the left hand steering wheel spoke to access what you want. Another nearby button also allows you to customise information shown on the head-up display but that's standard only on pricier variants like the one we're trying here. Anything this instrument binnacle monitor can't tell you will be covered off by this Honda Connect Center Dash infotainment screen whose 7-inch size looks very small indeed in an era when 10 and 11-inch center screens are becoming popular in this segment. With base trim, you don't even get that. A little 5-inch monitor audio screen featuring instead. The Garmin satellite navigation system that's standard with the 7-inch Honda Connect package isn't any great shakes, but because it includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone mirroring connectivity, you can bypass that if you want and alternatively load in something like Google Maps or Waze. This 7-inch Connect screen also includes internet browsing capability, a reversing camera and a very good DAB audio system that above entry-level trim has nine speakers and a subwoofer. You can also download your favourite apps via the Honda App Centre and one of them, AHA, uh -huh, comes preloaded with the system giving you access to thousands of stations of audio spanning everything from music to news, podcasts and audiobooks, plus social media and location-based services. We pointed out back in 2018 that the screen selections were quite slow to activate and the graphics a bit basic and nothing's changed on that front. But we remain pleased that, as then, you do at least get a proper knob to operate the audio volume. The sort of thing that's been unwisely dispensed with on other more modern setups from other brands. 
Conventional climate dials and buttons sit just below this monitor and those gear shift buttons are flanked by drive mode switches on the left and the electric handbrake on the right. Your main connectivity port, two USB-A sockets sit further down next to a wireless charging mat that only features if you stretch right to the top of the range, just in front of twin cup holders. Stowage options continue further back too, courtesy of a box between the seats, the front part of which incorporates a sliding tray intended for your phone. Pull that tray back and you can access the 12 volt port that sits in the deep bin just below. Take the tray out completely and you free up a huge stowage box, opening large enough to swallow, say, a laptop or a handbag. Here's another little touch we really like. The overhead sunglasses compartment incorporates a convex rear child view mirror so that you can keep an eye on what the kids are getting up to at the back. That might really sell you this car. Not so good is the fact that Honda hasn't thought to cool the big glove box. Plus, this compartment by the driver's right knee isn't lidded, so will probably deposit its contents into the footwell the first time you throw the car into a roundabout. Honda says that this compartmentalised door bin is 48% bigger than that of the previous generation model, but it still seems rather narrow, and you only get a ticket clip on the driver's sun visor. What else? Well, if your experience of CRVs dates back to before this fifth generation model's original arrival back in 2018, you'll notice this RW1 series design's more spacious cabin, which offers 5mm more headroom and 16mm more hip room than the previous Mark IV version. As for all-round visibility, well, relatively thin A-pillars and quite a low-set bonnet certainly aid that when you're looking forward. Deep front side windows and large door mirrors make it easy to see out of the side too. The over-the-shoulder view could be better though. The car's tapering rear window line rather hiding obstacles you might be about to hit at each rear corner. That'll be a problem if you opt for entry-level trim that lacks the rear parking sensors and reversing camera fitted to all variants further up the range. OK, let's take a look in the back seat. Now, this fifth generation model took quite a big step forward from its pre-2018 era predecessor with regards to rear seat space thanks to a useful 40 millimetre increase in wheelbase length. And this wide opening door makes it easy for parents to reach inside and strap up child seats too. Sure enough, once seated, you'll find that it really is very spacious back here indeed by class standards. If you're struggling to justify the premium required for a CRV over what you'd pay for a slightly cheaper SUV that's uh, Qashqai or Attica sized, here's where you'll do it. Instead of the relatively cramped conditions offered by models like that, there's room to stretch out a bit here, courtesy of a 50 millimetre increase in legroom created by that wheelbase length increase and aided further by slim seat backs and the way you can easily slide your shoes under the chair in front. There's around 800 millimetres of leg space here. To put that into class perspective, a rival Mazda CX-5 would offer 730 millimetres, while even a slightly larger segment contender like Skoda's Kodiak only gives you 750 millimetres. Headroom's good too, even if you've got a top variant like this one fitted with a panoramic glass roof. Unfortunately, this middle bench lacks the seat reclining and seat base sliding features it used to have in the old seven seat version of this fifth generation CRV. Older generation versions of this model used to feature that functionality too, but it's had to be dispensed with to accommodate the new era hybrid tech. On the plus side, the prominent central transmission tunnel that impedes practicality in the back of a Civic is replaced here by one that's relatively low, even in this all-wheel drive model, making it easier to accommodate three adults if need be. Rear folk get twin centre vents in a CRV2, though no B-pillar vents. If there are only two of you, you'll be able to use this central armrest with its twin cup holders, seat back pockets, individual overhead reading lights and a couple of USB-A ports are all provided, plus this top variant gets heated rear seats too. The doors feature reasonably sized stepped bins and look nicely finished, though close inspection reveals that the stitching they feature is of both the actual and fake variety. And the cargo area? Well, most CRV customers will have to lift this tailgate themselves. Only with this top spec EX variant is it 
power operated. In this case, there's the option of opening it with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper if you find yourself approaching the car, key in pocket laden down with bags. Plus, you can easily adjust the height the hatch will rise to if you're in a low ceiling garage or a cramped multi-storey car park. Once everything's opened up, you'll find 497 litres of capacity on offer, which is 64 litres less than was on offer from the conventionally engined version of this fifth generation model that we tested back in 2018. Again, you can blame the hybrid system powertrain for that, but this car's arch rival, Toyota's RAV4, has that too, and that car still manages to offer a 580 litre boot. More casualties of the hybrid system's packaging include the deletion of the adjustable height boot floor and the standard spare wheel that used to feature on this model. But this is at least a very usable space thanks to only a small amount of wheel arch intrusion with the area accessed via the lowest loading sill height in the segment. Bag hooks um, appear to be missing, but there's a 12 volt socket on the left, dim lights on either side and four tie downs. Under the cargo floor, there's this very narrow little stowage tray in front of the toolkit. And we want to specify the tough, durable boot tray that your dealer can provide to go on top of it. And we'd also want to consider the extra cost cargo pack that allows you to subdivide the boot area. If you need more room and have long, narrow items to accommodate, you'll be disappointed to find that Honda provides neither a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 split for the second row backrest either of which would allow you to take things like skis without disturbing a couple of rear-seated folk. In a CRV, you'd have to fold the second row backrest for something like that. At least the one-handed process of flattening the 60-40 split rear bench is straightforward via these useful catches provided in the cargo bay sidewall. You can raise the seats one-handedly too. Once you've flattened everything, a 1,694 litre space is freed up if you load to the ceiling. 62 litres less than the old conventionally engined version of this model, but about the same as you'd get from a competing Toyota RAV4. The space on offer is level and there's 1,830 millimetres of loading length, enough to accommodate a 19.5 inch frame mountain bike. Unfortunately, there's no fold-flat front passenger seat option to allow the interior carriage of even longer items. This CRV hybrid has been positioned firmly at the upper end of the volume part of the mid-sized SUV C segment, so don't expect the kind of £25,000 up pricing that characterises the most affordable Qashqai class models in this sector. At the time of this test, in spring 2022, Honda's asking prices were pitched from around £31,500, but most likely buyers will probably be looking at a derivative priced in the thirty-five to £38,000 bracket, and it's possible to pay well over £41,000 for one, which really is getting into premium territory. So, let's break down the now hybrid-only CRV range a bit for you. Self-charging, full hybrid, that is. Honda doesn't bother with the nominal mild hybrid tech you'll find elsewhere in this segment, so don't go price matching against that. It's not the same thing at all, as the efficiency figures will show you. Honda doesn't offer pricey plug-in hybrid technology in this car either. Across the CRV hybrid lineup, there are five trim levels, S, S, E, then a choice between Sportline and SR, both identically priced, before you get to this top plush EX variant. With the mid-level SE and SR grades, you can specify all-wheel drive for an extra £1,500. And with this top EX level of trim, you have to have all-wheel drive. You can no longer have a manual gearbox, a diesel engine, or a third seating row option with this fifth generation CRV. All okay so far? Well done if you're still with us. Now, we'll get on to something hopefully a touch more straightforward, namely how this CRV's pricing pitches it against obvious mid-sized rivals. There are only three that share this car's efficient full hybrid self-charging powertrain format. Toyota's RAV4, also priced from around £31,000, and two Hyundai Motor Group mid-sized SUVs, HEV versions of the Hyundai Tucson and the Kia Sportage, both priced from around £33,000. 
All three of these rivals significantly better this Honda's fuel economy showing, but lag significantly behind a CRV hybrid when it comes to the tax crucial CO2 reading. Our cost of ownership section will give you more details on that. Having considered all of that, you may well have come to much the same conclusion as we have, namely that though CRV hybrid pricing might initially look a little high, it's actually been very thoughtfully pitched for pretty reasonable value when you take into account the kind of product that you're getting. If having decided that you're minded to want to choose this car, you'll be wanting to know just how generous Honda's been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Most of what you're likely to really need is included, even with entry-level trim. So, even entry-level S models get 18-inch alloy wheels, dusk-sensing full LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, front LED fog lights, powered heated mirrors, and an alarm immobiliser. Inside, you get climate control, Bluetooth for your phone, driver's seat height and lumbar adjustment, cruise control with a speed limiter, an alarm, and clever one-touch folding rear seats. There's also a five inch monitor audio center screen from which you can control a decent quality eight speaker DAB stereo system, which includes USB and iPod connectivity. Plus there's a wide package of camera driven safety features. More on that in a minute. Unfortunately, there's no longer a spare wheel included with this Mark V CRV or even the option for one. Most CRV buyers, though, will be starting their perusal of the lineup from the next trim level up, SE. As we suggested earlier, you need to be at least at this point in the range if you're to have the option of all wheel drive. The most significant feature an SE trimmed CRV will enjoy over a base spec model is the Honda Connect 7 inch color infotainment touchscreen, which comes complete in all its forms with Garmin satellite navigation. Via the Connect screen, you can also access a nine speaker DAB audio setup, use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and download apps from the Honda App Center. Aha for internet radio comes preloaded on the system. The standard rear parking camera you get with this trim level works off this screen too. Other included SE spec features include climate control, rain sensing auto wipers, rear privacy glass, leather for the steering wheel and gear knob, front and rear parking sensors, power retracting door mirrors and an auto dimming rear view mirror. Inevitably, though, of course, the real niceties are to be found on the plusher models. If you can stretch into the mid range and are happy with front wheel drive, there's the identically priced choice of either SR or Sportline spec. The Sportline model has a black theme going on with that colour featuring on the wheels and door mirrors and complementing this variant's smoked rear lights and Sportline styling pack. Inside with this grade there's black edition embossed leather upholstery, dark wood effect instrument panel garnish and piano black interior door handles. If you're prepared to forego all of this black themed frippery or merely want all wheel drive on your mid range CRV, then you'll be turning to the SR variants offered with either front or all wheel drive and including a package of perhaps more significant extras, stuff like leather upholstery, roof rails, ambient lighting and a windscreen wiper de-icer. The front seats become heated and add lumbar support and height adjustment for the front passenger, while the front fog lights gain a cornering function. Finally, if you can stretch to the top of the range, you'll get yourself an EX spec CRV like the one we're trying here. The all wheel drive only flagship level of trim is identifiable by its inclusion of an opening panoramic glass roof and other EX features include a head up display, a hands free access powered tailgate, a wireless charging mat and heat for the steering wheel and rear seat. Plus front driver's seat eight way powered adjustment with memory settings. On to options. Now, for a start, you're almost certainly going to be paying your dealer extra for your choice of colour because the only one that comes as standard is a Rally Red solid shade. Beyond that, there are a range of premium paint colours like this test car's modern steel metallic or with the SR and EX trim grades, you can pay even more for the lustrous Crystal Red premium plus paint. 
staying with aesthetic considerations, a couple of extra cost packs might be of interest. You might want the premium pack that gives you side body protectors, doorstep garnishes, front and rear mud guards, and elegance spec carpet mats. There's also the illumination pack that gives you puddle lights and illuminated doorstep garnishes, or you could choose the aero pack, which includes sleeker front and rear aero bumpers, a tailgate spoiler, and running boards. That latter feature, by the way, can be ordered separately. The lower side sills, the rear bumper and the boot loading sill can be decorated with silver trim, as can the door mirrors. There's a style pack that gives you body coloured accents on the lower side of the car. And if you've chosen the Sportline model, you can add a Sportline Plus pack, which gives you black running boards, a black tailgate spoiler, doorstep garnishes, elegance floor mats and a branded boot mat. Across the range, your dealer will offer you the chance to add an upper tailgate spoiler and side window wind deflectors. There are alternative 18-inch alloy wheel style options too. For the inside, front ambient footlights are available to bathe the front footwells in a cool shade of blue. As for practical stuff, well, you could add a tow bar, of course, which comes with a 13-pin trailer harness. And there are roof rails available if the trim level you decide upon doesn't have them. And you'll need these, of course, if you want the optional Thule 410-litre roof box. Or if you go for roof crossbars that'll hold skis, snowboards or bicycles. There's also a bicycle carrier for the tailgate too. And for the boot, we'd probably look at the cargo pack, which gives you a bumper step protector and silver boot sill decoration, plus a premium boot organiser that uses telescopic rails to subdivide the cargo area. All three items can, on request, be ordered separately. Aside from that, for the boot floor, you can add in a tray, a mat or a net. And pet owners might want the dog guard too, to separate the luggage bay from the passenger compartment. You can also order the usual floor mats, and for the backs of the front seat head restraints, you can add a coat hanger kit or a tablet holder kit so the iPads and the like can be attached to keep youngsters quiet on longer journeys. Finally, a windshield cover to protect the windscreen at night might also be of interest. Enough with standard kit and options, let's take a look at safety provision. Well, this is a real CRV strong point thanks to the standard inclusion on every model of the Honda Sensing package of camera-driven features, eight features to be exact, which together make this arguably one of the safest cars in its sector. Now, we'll talk you through them. Autonomous braking is these days a must-have inclusion on cars in this segment. Honda calls its setup a collision mitigation braking system. And as usual with this type of thing, there's a camera that scans the road ahead looking for potential accident hazards as you drive. If one's detected, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Also helping here is a forward collision warning that lets you know if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front. That's two of the Honda Sensing camera-driven safety features fitted to every CRV. What about the six others? Well, lane departure warning, road departure mitigation and a lane keeping assist system all help you stay within your lane on the highway. Then there's traffic sign recognition to picture signs as you pass and display them on the dash and an intelligent speed limiter, which when set can adjust your speed to the limit indicated by the last speed sign you passed. Finally, there's intelligent adaptive cruise control, a setup not only able to adapt your highway speed to suit prevailing traffic flow, but one that can also react to other vehicles cutting in in front of you. That intelligent adaptive cruise control comes fitted with a low speed following feature that, if you come across a tailback on the highway, will automatically slow you right down, if necessary, to a complete halt, then seamlessly move you off again back up towards your preset speed. In addition to all this, as you would expect, the basics of safety provision are properly accounted for. 
This Mark V model's very stiff, strong and rigid platform incorporates what Honda calls ACE, or Advanced Compatibility Engineering Body Design, which employs a network of connected structural elements to distribute crash energy more evenly and reduce the forces transferred into the passenger cell in the event of an impact. In addition, should you have such a crash, clever crash stroke technology uses a neat hinge design on the front frame to direct the engine down and rearwards, which adds an extra 80 millimetres of extra energy absorbing protection to the front of the vehicle, further helping to minimise cabin intrusion. In other words, passenger safety in modern automotive design is about a lot more than just sticking in a few airbags. But of course, this CRV gets those two twin front, side and curtain bags, though no knee bag is included. Plus, you get all kinds of electronic acronyms to hopefully ensure that you'll never have to use them. There's an agile handling assist system to help with corner turn-in and vehicle stability assist, Honda's version of the kind of ESC stability control system you now expect on a, a car of this kind. Also par for the course is an ABS braking setup with emergency braking assist to aid in panic stops, advertised to following motorists by automatically activating brake and hazard warning lights. Other standard safety features include hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, active front head restraints to minimise accident whiplash, and ISOFIX child seat fastenings plus a tyre deflation warning system and a front end section of the car designed to minimise pedestrian injuries. There's also an emergency call system that, in the event of an accident, will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. Fit a tow bar and you get trailer stability assist to reduce trailer sway too. If you want more, then you'll need the plusher SR and EX trim levels that gain two further camera-driven features. Blind spot information works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake if there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And the cross-traffic monitor lets you know if vehicles are approaching as you reverse out of a bay. When we tested Honda's Jazz and HRV EHEV hybrid models, we were surprised to find just how far the official WLTP fuel figures lagged behind those of obvious rivals. And so it is here. The front-driven CRV hybrid model that most will choose returns 42.8 mpg on the combined cycle, which compares somewhat unfavourably with what you'd get from this model's three most obvious segment rivals, the Toyota RAV4 and full hybrid self-charging versions of the Hyundai Tucson and the Kia Sportage, all of which are up around 50 mpg. Honda's take on this is that its eHEV technology is designed for optimum real-world returns rather than to suit the needs of the WLTP cycle, and there's some truth in that. This all-wheel drive CRV, by the way, is WLTP rated at a best of 39.8 mpg, which drops to 39.2 mpg with the top EX spec we have here. With the Jazz and the HRV eHEV models, we found that the CO2 returns also lagged behind obvious rivals, but that's not the case here. Quite the contrary, in fact. The 120 gram per kilometre figure of a front-driven CRV is a useful six or seven grams per kilometre better than the emissions return of the three competitor models just mentioned. Indeed, you could run an all-wheel drive CRV like this one, but thanks to its 126 gram per kilometre CO2 reading, enjoy the same BIK CO2 tax status of a two-wheel drive RAV4, Sportage or Tucson Hybrid. That'll see a 20% taxpayer paying £207 a month for an all-wheel drive CRV, while a 40% taxpayer would incur a liability of £414 a month on that car. For the two-wheel drive CRV, the respective monthly BIK tax figures would be £175 and £350. You could, of course, cut those BIK rates hugely if you were to opt for a plug-in hybrid version of a model in this segment. And that's available to you with really pricey versions of the RAV4, the Tucson and the Sportage. But Honda sees PHEV tech as currently unnecessary in this segment. In our driving experience section, we explained how this CRV's eHEV hybrid system works. 
The clever way that it constantly defaults to electrification means that if you're careful with the throttle in real world use, this Honda will function fully electrically for around 80% of the time when in town and still for more than 40% of the time at a 40 mile an hour cruise. Even at 62 miles an hour, it will click into EV mode for around a third of the time. And you can also use paddles provided behind the steering wheel to maximize engine braking energy regeneration, so charging up the battery faster and increasing the amount of time the system can switch away from petrol power. It isn't only the powertrain that makes this car efficient. Sleek aerodynamics are aided by an active grille shutter system, which sees air inlets beneath the chromed Honda badge on the nose open only as far as they need to for engine cooling. Plus, the all-wheel drive system's been designed so that when torque transfer to the rear wheels isn't required, such as during high-speed cruising, the propeller shaft to the rear wheels is decoupled to reduce mechanical drag. Honda also provides a series of driving tools to help owners maximise possible returns. There's an engine stop-start system, of course. In addition, in the trip computer section of the vehicle info part of the Centre Dash Honda Connect screen, there are current drive and previous drive readouts, plus average fuel economy and range readings, along with a history section, all of it enabling you to better track your efforts towards frugality. As with the previous generation CRV, there's also an Ecom button. When this is activated, a green leaf display appears in the instrument cluster and fuel economy is improved by automatic adjustments to the throttle response, the engine control system and the air conditioning. As you drive with the Econ setting engaged, a super slim strip above the rev counter illuminates in a series of colours to flag up whether your driving style is conducive to maximum efficiency. If the car's been driven economically, the strip glows green, slightly exceeds to optimum level of throttle control, and the strip will then glow white and green. And during heavy acceleration and deceleration, it will glow white. You soon get the idea. Of course, overall running costs aren't just about fuel and CO2 readings. There's plenty else to consider. The extent of expected depreciation, for example. The good news here is this fifth generation model hangs on to its value impressively. As a result, the Honda is among the best in this sector, with a residual value of 40% after three years and 60,000 miles. That's competitive with rival premium brand models and much better than you get from most volume maker mid-sized SUVs. That may compensate to some extent for insurance costs that may be a little higher than those of rivals. These vary across the range from 22 to 24E. As for the warranty, well, it's the usual three-year package, though in this case the coverage does last for up to 90,000 miles rather than the 60,000 mile cap imposed by most rivals. Servicing comes around every 12,000 miles or once a year, depending on which arrives soonest, and you can spread the cost of this with a fixed price scheme called Five that covers servicing for a total of five years. It also adds an extra two years of maintenance, an extended warranty for this period, and roadside assistance breakdown cover should the unexpected happen. This can also be transferred to a new owner if you sell the car before the service plans expired. It's easy to imagine yourself as target market for a car like this CRV hybrid. You've a couple of kids, an active lifestyle and an aversion to rather dull large estate cars. The thing is, though, you've also an aversion to the kind of mid-sized SUV soft roaders that such a mindset would normally direct you towards. Understandably, perhaps, you think they're all rather pretentious and silly. But this car isn't. In fact, it's as sensible as family segment, lifestyle oriented SUV motoring gets. A car for people who look at what a vehicle can do for them rather than what it says about them. End use, you see, has been the overriding design parameter here. Not cutting edge styling, clever gadgetry, irrelevant pin sharp handling or pointlessly powerful engines. As a result, it's an extremely easy thing to live with. The kind of car you'll own, then wonder how you managed without. That may not be a recipe for media headlines, but it's an approach that other brands 
could certainly learn from, explaining why so many CRVs are bought by folk who previously owned one. There are people who'll probably stick with Honda through this updated fifth generation model's full scale switch to self charging hybrid power, even though it's meant some compromises in cabin flexibility. This electrified power plant gives you most of the economy of the previous diesel version, but with much better refinement and considerably lower tax payments. True, other contenders in this class can also offer this kind of powertrain these days, and some of them are a little more rewarding to drive, but few are as comfortable and refined. In summary, we can see why so many global customers will still accept nothing less than Honda's interpretation of what a mid-sized family SUV of this kind should be. Ultimately, it remains distinctively different, distinctively well, CRV, which ultimately might very well be all you need.